Okay. Thanks for logging in, you made it. So we are going to just give it a couple more minutes as we get this set up. We got a comment here, smile DJ. <laughs> <laughs> We're smiling. We're making sure all this is set up. So welcome to take control of your money. We're going to give it a couple more minutes here because we know there's been quite a few registrations. And why don't we bring Chandran over hello. to say hello. <laughs> and I'm already smiling. <laughs> hello, everybody. Yes, we're excited to be here. Thank you for joining us. So we're just going to give it a couple more minutes and we're going to start taking control of our money and talking about controlling it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> excited. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to, um, so what you'll see here is you're going to um, lose us and then you should be able to um, see the screen here. Um, let's see, can someone tell me, um, that they're seeing the right screen here, all these technical difficulties. We'll see you. You still see us? I think the two monitors are. Okay. All right. What do you see now? Still. Yeah. Oh, we're good. You, um, bear with us here. There we go. All right. <clears throat> okay, so again, welcome. Let's see, there is a chat here. I don't know if we can see that. Oh. Okay, we are good to go here. Thank you for bearing with us. So we're excited to talk about um, how to take control of our money and how to pursue financial freedom. This, this concept of financial freedom is that, that peace of mind, that feeling that you're in control of your finances and doing that what we call the smart investor way. And we're gonna share more about that as we get going here. So we are going to start here and talk a little bit about our company and our firm. We have five locations to serve you. I am located in the Newport office, which you see here is the bottom picture. That's my building out in Newport. Today, we're coming to you live from Salem. That is the top picture. And then we also have locations in Corvallis, Eugene, and Vancouver. Um, we're also excited that in the last two years, we have been recognized by Forbes as a best in state wealth advisors. Uh, and you can see there that the disclosure below is how, how we are ranked. There's more information about that on our website as well. And we are proud to be supported by LPL Financial as our broker dealer. So to get started today, um, I am Julia here. This slide is all about me. I have been uh, in this industry and um, in financial services for over 20 years. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my only career, which um, I just, I, I, I love it and have found a passion for it. And then about 11 years ago, I came across Dave Ramsey and read his book, Total Money Makeover and really embraced his teachings and are aligned with his philosophy. And now we are the smart vester pro for most of Oregon and uh, Southwest Washington. So we're excited about that. And then today joining me is DJ Wright. Hello, thanks for joining us guys. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm excited to have you with me. He is one of our wealth advisors <laughs> here at Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group. He is from Eugene, mm -hmm. so you do um, work out of our Eugene office, yep. as well as come up here to Salem. Correct. And then, uh, one other thing, graduated from University of Oregon, go Ducks. Go Ducks. <laughs> and then um, I, I probably would get in trouble if I don't talk about Jason Harris, who is our other wealth advisor, and he is primarily located in Corvallis. You guys have a rivalry We sure there. do. We sure do. It's healthy competition, it is, right? It is. It's fun. <laughs> 
So DJ has all of the licenses that he needs to be a wealth advisor, but he also has a kind of a fun fact here. So you were a model for the Kendall catwalk. Can I was, you tell us so more about that? This was a couple of months ago. This is not something I would usually do, but I went out, you know, and tried something new. Uh, it was a great cause for the community. All the proceeds went to the Boys and Girls Club of Emma Valley. Awesome. So you have some hidden talent here so it wasn't really a talent it was more of a hobby and i dressed up as Jon snow from game of thrones i'm so sad it's over i'm sure some of you guys are too i i think we probably have a lot of fans out there <laughs> it was hilarious and then i also had my three-year-old son join me he was the greatest showman so we walked together and it was, it was fun. uh perfect i think we need to have a picture of ollie here that would be good. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. We are going to talk um, first here briefly about today's financial realities. Okay, so this is amazing to me. 60% of Americans can't cover a $1,000 emergency, right? Amazing. Uh, it is, and I think we really saw that when the government was shut down at the mm -hmm. end of last year, and there was, uh, you know, so many families were concerned about not being able to pay the mortgage and not being able to pay the bills. And I feel like that sense of emergency, once, once we get out of it, it's hard to go back and say, oh, I got to prepare better. Um, so we're going to talk about that here in a yes, little bit. <laughs> okay, so then next here is um no margin or no safety net right 20 percent of americans the 20 percent 26 percent of their paycheck goes to consumer debt payments and so that is credit cards and auto loans not this is not including their mortgage payment and the average american savings balance is less than fifty thousand dollars right so really this is overspending right people are spending more than they're bringing in and I would say maybe they don't set out to do that intentionally. It's just what it happens yeah. when you're not taking control yeah. of your money. Uh, okay, so most of us don't have a plan, right? 59% don't prepare a detailed monthly budget, right? Another amazing fact. And then 78% of us live paycheck to paycheck. You know, most of us have been there at some point too. That's not fun. Um, that can be very scary. And so there's some things you can do to alleviate some of that stress. Yeah, I think the, the you're here today, right? So you're deciding to make a change and taking control. I think a lot of us, you know, we're, we're good about being reactive, if you will, like right. not paying attention, but the, the key is to bring awareness and deciding to create intention with your money, to be proactive, to have a plan. And that is what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk about how to take control and make a money plan. We're gonna talk about the seven baby steps to get your money to work for you, investing principles, three reasons to save, and some quick money tips as well. So first, I'll start out with this. What are, why are, what are some good reasons to have a plan for your money, right? Maybe just to know where it's going or have you heard of, there's a, there's a quote out there, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if we don't know where it's going every month, we don't, we don't have a baseline essentially to make changes with. Right, that's step one, knowing where it's going right now. Right, deciding you're here, so you're making a decision to do something about it, right? I, I always equate this to if we want to lose weight, right? We have to have a plan and we also have to know where we're starting. So a lot of times we have to, to take that initiative and make the plan to make progress right but you there's another one what you track improves there you go yeah like so yeah. that is good okay so one thing that we can all do make a plan every single month okay so th this doesn't mean start the year make your plan for the whole year you really need to look at this in 30 day chunks okay right we have different expenses each month you know you may have a heavy birthday month Maybe you got a wedding coming up. And so it really varies month to month. And so you want to look at the details, you know, the beginning of the month and just look out 30 days, right? And then once those 30 days are up, do it again, right? Yeah. I mean, so we're talking about the word budget here, which sometimes is a bad word, right, right. <laughs> but it's a bad word because of our thoughts associated with it. The way that I would look at it is 
this is your chance every 30 days to tell your money where mm -hmm. to go instead of your money telling you where it went, right. Right? right? And so when sometimes when we get, when we think long-term or even when we think about, you know, retirement, we, we get overwhelmed with thinking we have to do so much. Mm -hmm. So with this, it's good to say, let's just take 30 days. What, right. what can we do in 30 days? And if you don't, maybe you don't reach your, do exactly what you wanted to do, you get a redo. You got to do it again. Exactly. I love that. <laughs> so it starts with in your thinking about the four um, big expenses in your budget. Number one, your housing. Maybe if you rent or you have a mortgage, your auto, your gas. Well, we both have electric cars, yeah. so we wiped out I gas. I still have some gas, though. I'm not fully electric. Okay. <laughs> so I got to do that. Yes. And then um, also groceries. I mean, we have a family of seven that lives with us, so it's like we have to allocate quite a bit to grocery money. Right. And then having a plan for the credit cards and the consumer debt. And I'll, I'll give you this. When we talk about uh plan you know doing a budget i always say it's never going to be perfect right you have to kind of start where you're at and and make progress so i would say progress not perfection not none of us can be perfect right. but as long as we're setting the intention and trying and in doing that is is where you're going to find success along the way absolutely yeah um, okay, number three. So when you're, you know, right, you're sitting down at the beginning of the month and you're doing your specific budget, every dollar should be accounted for. That's very important, right? You don't want to just have some leeway, some room, every single dollar, right? And then that includes savings, right? Or, uh, or retirement savings, right? That's part of your budget, right? Exactly. And so, uh, you know, debts that you're paying, money that you're saving for retirement, that should all be included in here. Yes, absolutely. And we, we call this the zero base budget. So what the intention is that you know each month how much money or thereabouts is coming in, and then you're actually spending that money on paper before you before the month happens. Right. So mm -hmm. you're telling your money where to go, right? That's the powerful you're thing. In control. You're, you're in control. You're in the control. driver's seat. Your money's not. Yeah. And so whether you're, you know, just starting out in life, maybe you're in the middle like that's where i'm i'm not starting out i'm like my kids are teenagers and and we, we have a lot of activities we're starting to think about college like there's a lot of things going on and it's hard to keep up with it month to month but it, it's important that you sit down and do that and even in retirement thinking about you know having a plan with your money is going to help keep that retirement on track right and rather than thinking of this as like a chore or a task, make it fun, right? Sit down with your partner. Maybe you have a day, you know, the beginning of the month. You sit down you, and you talk about it. And it can be fun. It can be a fun thing that you're doing. Exactly. So, yeah, we need to take the dread out of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> and normally in a partnership, there is one person that is more in control of the money or does the finances. So, like I know in uh, my relationship, I'm the one that, that actually does the budget. But then I'm also accountable to my partner to say, hey, this is how we're spending the money. Do you agree? And then if we do get off track, if something comes up and we do have to spend money, then I have to go and say, hey, this is off plan. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And and we make those decisions together. Yeah. So oftentimes um, having the plan takes the arguments away because you because there is a plan. There's intention involved. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some steps to making, like how do we work with your money? Like what is, what's the next step here? Absolutely, okay, so step one, save $1,000 for emergencies, right? Call your emergency fund. That's just sitting in the bank, sitting in cash, whatever you wanna do, but it's totally ready, liquid, and, and sitting there for when you need it, right? Maybe something, I mean, things come up. They're gonna always come up and you gotta be ready for that, okay? Um, then you can go on to step two. So this is where you focus on your debt. So really before you start, you know, saving for retirement and things like that, you want to clear your debts, except for your house, right? Most of us are going to have a mortgage for, for a while, so that's okay. But really clear all the rest or rest of the consumer debts, things like that, credit cards, uh, car, car debt, things like that. You want to get those off your plate. Yeah. Um, once you have that, you go to step three, and this is where you're going to build your emergency fund for three to six months of living expenses. Right. So what do you need in a given month? You want to have at least three sitting in the bank ready for you. Right. In case you lose your job or whatever it may be. You were talking about the government shutdown. Yeah. If you have that six months. Hey, you're going to be OK while you go figure out what, what's going to happen next. 
Yep, and and look, mer- emergency funds are probably the the most overlooked item when we meet with clients, whether they're in retirement or you know middle stages of their career. It, it seems like emergency funds are just not pr- a priority, yeah. right? They want to put the money away for retirement or um, or spending it, but it, they are critical because what that we don't know when emergencies are going to happen, right? But what I've seen is that when the emergencies happen and they don't have the emergency funds, they either go to debt, right? They put on a credit card or they're forced to take it out of their retirement mm-hmm. plan. And when you do that, what happens? Penalties, taxes, Penalties. all kinds of things. You don't want to do that. And on top of that, if you're invested and the market is down, you're forced exactly. to take the money out yeah. when it's low. So that is why emergency funds is is really important. And one part. other thing, this can go the other way too, right? You don't want to have a whole, a whole bunch. You don't want to have a year's worth or two years worth of money sitting in a bank, right? That's very safe, but it's not really growing for you. So that's why you want that three to six range, no less, no more. Every other dollar should be working for you somewhere. Exactly. Okay, so next we have step four is investing or saving and investing 15% of your income. This is where it gets fun. This is the fun part. And here's the deal. It doesn't matter what your income is. You can save. I mean, I remember back in the day, I, I think I worked at McDonald's and I was saving part of that paycheck. There you go. So whether you make $10,000 or $100,000, we can always save. And the other thing is, if you can't do 15%, start somewhere. Maybe it's 1% or 3%. Like you work hard for your money. Who should be the first person that gets paid? You. Yes, us. And so what I would encourage if you do start small, that as you get raises or as your your um, career advances, you make a commitment to yourself that you're going to put a part of that increase into your retirement plan and into your savings. Okay. The sooner you start on this, the better you are. But a big but here, it's never too late to start. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, step five is saving for college. Now, oftentimes what we see is someone really excited. Maybe they've had a baby and they want to start saving for college, but if they're not out of consumer debt or they haven't started saving for retirement, we kind of discourage that and tell them, hey, we got to go to back to the baby steps. You got to do these in order before you can start saving for mm-hmm, college. Mm-hmm. Yep. Step six is paying off the house early. So again, you have to be on track for retirement, on track for the kids' college education before you make payments, extra payments to your mortgage and mm-hmm. get that paid off. Right. And I see this a lot. I'm sure you do as well, where people yeah. come in, they, they basically paying off the house early is kind of step three or something like that. That's right. That's their focus. And that's just not what you want to do. You want to have your retirement accounts you know, on a good path before you start throwing extra at that mortgage. The house is not going to give you income in retirement. Your retirement accounts are going to. Exactly. And uh, part of that investing principle is you need time in the market to get that investment experience. So you can't get back that time if you're focused on paying off a mortgage early. Right. Yeah. And then lastly, which is a really fun step, and I see we see lots of clients starting to build a legacy, start thinking about building this wealth for generations and then also this uh giving and and being involved not only with their money but time in causes that are important right exactly and so it never ends i've had people come hey i I paid off my house so now am i just done no it's an ongoing thing step seven never ends right you never keep helping people keep building your wealth doing things that you want to do so that's that goes on for forever and I, I feel, too, that there's giving along each step, right? There's giving along the way. I think with this attitude of how can I help others is important in all of these steps, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so why you should save your money, right? So obviously, we talked about emergencies. They're going to come up. So, so be ready for those, right? Be, be ready. Um, purchases, right? I want to go buy something new. I want this new purse. I want this new car, whatever it may be save your money and go buy it. We're so quick to just go swipe the credit card, right? But there's another way you can do it and you can make a plan and start saving money. You know, maybe it takes you a month, maybe it takes you a year, but you know, if you have a plan, you can get there and that's, you know. Yeah, and there's something to be said for 
for something that you work hard for. Like you exactly. set this goal, especially with kids. I see this with my kids. I, I teach them, we just don't go out and buy something. We have to think about how do we save this money and save it up for the purchase? Because you ensure that this is something that's aligned with what I want to be doing, aligned with the budget, exactly. you know, and, and you're teaching them and also teaching ourselves that we, it's not instant gratification. Like we have to right. be thoughtful about the purchases yeah. that we make. And it feels that much better when you've, you've put a lot of time and in, in planning into something and then you, you get it and then you feel really good about yourself. So. That's right. Yeah. And then lastly, another reason we save is to build wealth. So uh, it could be for retirement. Um, what I'm finding more and more though, is this figure of retirement. Some people don't want to retire. Right. They want, they love what they're doing and they're there, but I would say the cause or the kind of the focus then needs to be shifting to financial independence. Like how can I save money and create a nest egg that is going to give me financial independence? Right. Yeah. yeah. And it gives you options. Maybe you want to um, spend time doing some volunteer work or giving back. So if you have financial independence, that gives you that freedom to make those choices. Mm -hmm. Travel, vacation, that is often something else that you can save for. Uh, and and um, what else? Fam uh, the, the picture of the family here. It looks like grandchildren, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely, is, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, some, some quick money management tips. Number one, change doesn't happen overnight. So again, like I, I say, progress, not perfection. Uh, most people, they kind of get discouraged early on because it goes off track, but, but that is to be expected, right? I know in our family, we get pretty busy in the summertime and it's, it's hard to stop and, and budget. So we may not make that, that intentional practice of, of that budget every month in the summer, but then we usually get right back on track in September. Right. Yeah. So, but knows. we've been doing this, my husband and I have been doing this for probably at least 11 years. And it's amazing to go back and we have kind of records of our financial dates and the things that we've done. And to see that progress over time is powerful where it may not, you may not show up in that month. Right. And don't you kind of feel like, you know, in the summer, if you, when you kind of get off track, your life feels a little bit more messy, right? Things don't feel quite as secure and good and then you get back on track and you're like oh, I can breathe again it's good so. yeah I think that that's a that's a really good point and I I remember in that discipline so when you're when you're disciplined in something whether it be um in going on a diet or you know it with your money there's some a, a little bit of sense of freedom in that discipline mm -hmm. which feels good because you're on track it's and empowering. exactly yeah, empowering yeah it's also, you, when you think about your spending, when you're bringing awareness to it, your spending is often tied to your priorities. Mm -hmm. So if you're not paying attention, you're, you're kind of um, lazy in that, you can see where, where your priorities really lie. And so stick with it, right? I mean, Julia has been stressing this. It's going to be a process. It's not going to just happen immediately. Don't get crushed. Don't give up. Stick with it. You can do it. And it's a lifelong goal, right? You may never quite achieve what it is you're exactly looking for, but you're going to get close and keep climbing that ladder. Exactly. And then lastly, to make that lasting change, you have to be willing to embrace the facts. So what do I mean by that? Um, sometimes we make it out to be worse than it is. So if we're, if we have consumer debt, we may have car loans, student loans, mortgage, and that often can be pretty overwhelming to actually say, how do I stop and create a plan mm -hmm. for this? So I always equate it to, it's kind of like going on a diet. When we want to lose weight, what's the first thing we have to do is step on the scale. Step on the Find scale. You at. see where you're at and you're facing it. You're looking at the facts, but it gives you power in the sense that it's not, it's going to tell you where you're at, but then it takes away the overwhelm of not knowing where you're at or thinking it's worse than it really exactly. is. Yeah. So you're able to like draw a line in the sand. This is where I'm at. And now I'm going to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what are some next steps that um, someone can take? Number one, if you want to make a proactive plan for your future and for your money, 
we would be honored to schedule a complimentary consultation with one of our wealth advisors. You can do that by either replying to the email uh, you got for this, the confirmation of this mm -hmm. webinar, or feel free to call um, our offices to schedule that. We'd, we're also able to do that either in any of our offices or over Zoom or video conference, yep. phone. Whatever works best for you guys, we'll make it work. Yeah, the convenience is, is nice for that. Also, we wanna encourage you to check out our guided wealth portfolios on our website. You can see on the homepage on the top uh, right, there's a, a, um, a, um, a box to click for that. Those are really great portfolios for someone just getting started. Someone that is accumulating and in that stage of saving, like they just need to save money. So it's a really good diversified account that um, helps you Glenn, and get into that savings mm -hmm. mode. And um, that is a really good option that we have. Um, then connect with us on social media, okay? We have our Facebook page, Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group. Uh, we're posting a whole lot of stuff. So uh, hop on there, follow us, um, and then join us for our upcoming events. So we'll be doing more things like this. Yeah, we're excited in July. We uh, July 9th, we will be having an, another webinar similar to this, but we are going to be talking about guided wealth portfolios, what those are. We're going to dive into some details around that because we're just really excited um, about that option. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we have some others planned for the remaining of the year as well. Yeah. So, so look out for those. Yeah. And so lastly, we'll leave you, I got to give you some disclosures here. So everything we talked about today, it's for general information only. We can't give specific advice or recommendations um, without like learning about you and, and really knowing what you need. Exactly. Right? It's all about you. When you come talk to us, you know, we're going to find out what it is you're looking for and then and, and, uh, put together a plan for you based on your goals. That's right. And then again, as smart investor pros, um, uh, that is um, not affiliated with Financial Freedom Wealth Management Group. So we are a Smart Vester Pro, but it, it is not directly related to us. Um, that is a separate entity with the Dave Ramsey program. And then also um, it is not affiliated with LPL, which is our broker dealer as well. So again, we want to thank you for joining us today. We are not able to get to all of the questions. So if you do have questions, again, we would encourage you to email us. Uh, you can just go ahead and reply to the email that was sent to you um, with the confirmation, and we will make sure to answer all of those questions. Thanks for joining us. Yes, have a great day. Take care.